Welcome to Wilkes Community College. My name is Ronald Dallahy, and today I have with me Jonah Parker, and he's going to show us a little bit of grafting techniques. Thank you, Ron. I, uh, I'm an apple grower, among other things, and I've been growing apples for 60 years or so. Uh, and I took up grafting early on because it was a cheaper method of, of obtaining trees and money was scarce, as it usually is, and uh, I took this up and uh, it began to be fun, enjoyed it, and I've done a lot for other people, and, and sort of got to be a, a hobby. And we take uh, order rootstock from someplace that produces it, and uh, you gotta have sign wood that, wood that grew last year. So I preferred it. it uh, what you usually call water sprouts makes a good one or, or sometimes the tips of the limb. And I cut me up a handful long enough that I'll have two buds left after I graft it. And I have assorted sizes in here so I can match the size as close as I can onto the, to the root stalk. I cut a slope about an inch and a quarter long, go about three-fourths of the way towards the end of that and cut back into it. Pick me out a, uh, a sign wood here, about the same size. Cut it the same way. Gonna need the same length slope. Cut it right back in just like I did that. And this uh, wood won't ever grow together, this camium layer, the white part of the bark between the black bark and the wood, known as the camium layer, that's the tree and that part's the process of making new wood. So that's what we want to make contact. We've got to have contact with that between the rootstock and the sign wood. And the more contact, the better. That's the reason this, I like this whip graph. It's the best, best graph there is that I know of. There's a lot of different ways to do this. As long as you match your uh, camium layer, get it make contact, and you wrap it up air tight, and uh, have it ho well, hold it still where it can't move. That's the essential part to make a graph work. This is my wax pot. I plug that in, and my wax melted, and I just dip that top in in that wax. When I get it done, and uh, it's ready to set out. Now, when you dipped in that wax, is that just some kind of special wax or grafting wax? It's what grafting wax, and I make my own, uh, and that's to, to seal that in so it won't dry out. I use uh, the recipe I use is four parts uh, pine rosin and two parts beeswax and one part tallow. And melt it all, mix it all together, and it comes out pretty, pretty firm. Uh, you can vary that a little if you want a softer wax. You can vary it and add a little more uh, tallow and make a softer wax if you're going to work it with your hands. Like if you're doing a cliff graft or something where you've got to seal in the whole thing with wax, it takes a lot more. This is the only wax I use. You don't need any on this because it's all the wax as far as to seal it, seal it up. And this is already sealed with a rubber band, so you don't need none there. You just need to put a little on the end. Now, uh, with the heat of the wax, does that matter? Can you get it too hot or too cold? You can get it too hot. You have to, with this pot, I have to uh, uh, unplug it once in a while to keep it from getting too hot. Now, before I had this, I made me uh, one out of, uh, back when they put oil in tin cans, I fixed one little light bulb in there and set it on top of it. You could regulate your heat with a wattage of the bulb. <laughs> okay. But it took it longer to melt. It takes this pretty good while. But uh, that worked just to keep the wax melted, and that makes it real handy. You just dip it in there, and, and you're done. Now, do I have to take these rubber bands off when they... So the, They'll come the off. These bands will come off about uh, July or so. The sun will deteriorate them. If you got one in the shade and the sun don't hit it, you might have to help it, but... You don't want it there no way. You want them in full sun, and they'll rot and fall off by the time it knits together in there. That's no problem with that. 
they're made for that purpose. If you live further north, you you have to use a thinner band. Okay. Yeah, if you use too thick a one up where it's north, they don't uh, come off as easy. With this that you've took your sign wood right here, uh, I, mean, I heard you mention water sprouts, so it needs to be one year old wood? Is one, that year, one year old wood. Okay. These here's water sprouts, you can tell by looking the way it's cut off. That's when it usually comes up inside the tree and goes straight up. We call them water sprouts. Or if them's all done been cut out like my boys do when they're pruning, they don't leave me no sign, but I have to stay ahead of them. Uh, on the end of a limb, and you growth on the end of a limb, uh, you can get usually, a, sometimes you can get a long one. You can usually get some sign wood that way. Either, but you can tell what grew last, last year. Now on this right here, can I go ahead and just plant that out in my like little home orchard or something like that? Or what, what kind of care do I need to do for this once I get it grafted? I recommend you put it, either line them out in your garden somewhere. You can set them pretty close together in a row where you can take real good care of them. Or you can put them in, in pots. I'm, I'm putting mine in two gallon pots. And uh, I set them about that deep. I can label, stick me a label down in the dirt where it can't fade away so I know what's, what's, uh, what it is. And uh, keep it pruned. You gotta take off everything below that band that comes out. And these two buds, I only leave two buds up here on the sign wood. When it gets started good, I take off the bottom one. Because you, you just want a straight whip going up. And by next fall, if you keep, keep them damp and give them a little fertilized, and uh, they should be about four foot high. Is there a limit of how many varieties I can have on a tree? Uh, no, just however many you want to put on there. I've got a tree with... Uh, well, I put 120 in it, but I've lost a few, so I don't know exactly. So I, I'd say a little over 100 varieties in that one tree. Now, we mentioned a little bit about sign wood. When do I collect that, or what do I do once I do collect it? You collect the sign wood while it's dormant. So, like, month-wise, is there a certain uh, time better than others? February, March, sometime before the sap gets up. Okay. The difference is, I have grafted some in... July, we we'll whip graft and it lived. But difference is, when the sap, sap gets up, the bark will come loose from the wood. And uh, if you, uh, it won't heal as good like that. It takes a little practice to do this. Cut it in about the width of my knife blade. If you get it done just right, they'll just fit perfect. That's pretty close. Don't fit down real good on the ends, but, uh, but the rubber band will take care of that if you pull it good and tight, put pressure on it, and that'll pull that down to where it'll make contact. I enjoy teaching, uh, which I've been teaching here for a little class for about, I think about eight years. And uh, I think the best part about learning something is being able to share it with somebody, you know. And I, I enjoy the, I enjoy sharing it. Now, I don't know who invented this grafting thing, but it's been around a long time. Uh, it's referred to in the Bible about grafting, so it's been around a, a long, long time. But it's amazing that you can take one piece of wood and attach it to another piece of wood and make it grow together, you know.